Good Sunday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, Florida time. Wow, is it warmer today? No, <clears throat> actually, uh, it's still a little cool up here, but not too bad. But definitely a light jacket for sure. Kind of with my t-shirt, but you still kind of need a light jacket. Kind of a cool day, but hey, welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age conversations of cars, trucks. Boats, RVs, uh, everything off topic. Yeah, that's kind of my channel. So if anybody's following me, kind of know the routine. And here lately, just being down in Florida, I kind of have the time to keep on talking like I usually do. And here's my Bronco hat and Ford 2022 Bronco Raptor, or what we call the, the Braptor. And boy, I just love this truck. Even my kid drove it to the gym. The other day she comes home and she's like wow this thing is so nice dad she's never driven the uh the raptor bronco yet and then she drove it to the gym yesterday as well and uh, she's like dad this thing is just so nice so i mean can you really notice the difference from the the wild trucks like oh yeah so uh, she just loves the bronco and i do too just a great vehicle i think some people have a love hate meaning you kind of either love the way it looks those big fender flares or you don't and you know what, what's the saying it's it's in the eye of the beholder or you know everybody has a everybody's eyes looks at things differently and and that's what's kind of thing about this morning that uh what could be the morning conversation and here's the harley and last night i didn't know this but when she uh laid the bike down this was actually loose this assembly here came apart right here and so yesterday I had a heck of a time getting this assembly off the bike. And I thought it would be pretty simple. These two uh, Allens right here and these two Torx right here. And I went out and even bought a whole set of Torx since I don't have my tools down here with me. And sure enough, that didn't do it. There's another bolt way up underneath this uh, fender where you have to take tire off probably. Major project. But... I was able to uh, have my daughter, and I we pulled this thing out, and I was able to get back in there because there's an Allen behind that right there, and I fixed it, and so that's a good thing. You know, need to clean up the brushed up or roughed up parts, and I want to do the oil change, but tell me do got to do 5K service for that? Oh, the projects. But anyways, so. Uh, yeah, the eye of the, the eye of the beholder, the beholder of the eye. I don't even know what's what's the saying. What's the famous saying about about? And that's what I was thinking to myself this morning. Actually, I just kind of woke up and uh, I just kind of popped my head. You know, just one of these things. And oh yeah, today's Sunday, and we're going to church with my father. You better close the door here. He's going to be steals the Harleys, right? Yeah. Older community. He sent me on a mission to get me here to do that. But but anyways, uh, Sunday morning going to church with dad and kid and, and oh yeah so another thing reason i thought of this is look at here look at my my mother's and father's kitchen yesterday i went up to lowe's and if you look at these uh windows here versus you look at the windows over there i decided to uh, tint my uh, parents window here to help my mom because my mom has lost vision in her right eye and so sadly for my mother uh, she has very challenging times in her life now to get around and her eyes are very sensitive So I'm trying to help my mother out any way I can so she's gonna put curtains up here Which it may go that direction, but I thought the window tint would take down the glare in the room So I'm kind of hoping that helps her eyes and then I went up and bought some uh, nice uh, uh, Light bulbs these smart bulbs and it's so cool because you can set the theme, if you look here, I can set the theme to the room to different temp, you know, different uh, shades. You know, it's a whole app on your phone, and it's so cool that you can change the colors, and you can change the brightness, and you can, you know, you can tone it down, tone it up. So I have their, their uh, family room now where you can set the different colors. So hopefully, uh, you know, you can get pretty radical too on all the different colors. You can go here and you can be, you can go to a total red or the, you know, I'm sure people out there, the 
blue, the greens, and you can actually set a theme where uh, you can have actually a actually a theme going here so that the colors change. If you're having like entertaining people at nighttime, you end up a little bit of a theme going on. You can kind of have that effect. So pretty neat. And for now, I'm going for the daylight and kind of keep it toned down. And hopefully in the evening, it helps my mother uh, see better. So, yeah, so I thought to myself this morning, <clears throat> you know, conversation I think would be pretty good. Eyes, our eyes. I think to myself, and, and this so resonates into the uh, the automotive industry with our eyes. I mean, what's going on? And But, you know, once again, the theme of the morning, Sunday morning theme here in Florida is eyes. Mm -hmm. And let me get some, now with the coffee, and calm, get cooler, and I'll take my seat at my regular place here that I make my office and my parents' uh, living room. And so, so yeah, I thought to myself, wow, eyes. So, boy, oh boy, if in today's society, our eyes are being used more than ever. But I think in some ways, not to the to the best. The, and even for me, my eyes, I had just about had a detached retina. And my, my left eye is my stronger eye. And what's so crazy here, if you're a family, it seems like we all kind of, doesn't seem, things kind of seem to run in like spurts where things happen. So three years ago, I think it was summer 2019, I think, if I'm correct, my brother had, I think it could have been 2018, I just can't keep track of time. It probably was 2018 because I bought the boat, and yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 2018. So I bought the boat. And then the following summer, we couldn't use the boat because between my brother borderline having a detached retina and then a cracked uh, eyeball uh, and then my dad having surgery on his uh, his knee, we lost like the whole summer. So we spent, you know, I bought a brand new boat in 2017 and the summer of 2018, due to my father's uh, health and my brother's health, we didn't even really use the boat, boat much at all. It was really a summer of just kind of taking care of my father and brother, driving around to doctors. Yeah, no lie. I mean, that was a heck of a uh, of a summer of more idle time and fun time. And so then, <clears throat> so my brother had that detached, borderline detached retina. And then what's the odds of this? A year later to a T in June, I'm coming down 95, and, and I didn't bring my trailer with me, which I usually do bring my truck and trailer and for some reason i just didn't bring my uh, trailer with me and as i'm getting halfway down 95 my my left eye starts getting the cloud it starts you know showing i mean literally your your eye starts going like blind basically where literally it's it's the curtain they kind of call it so <clears throat> as time's progressing i'm noticing my eyes getting more blurry more blurry and and i'm thinking to myself boy i, I did a ton of, of weed spraying I just hate, in fact, if you look at my property, this past summer is the first time I just really didn't go out of my way to kill all the weeds and, and weed everything. I just think those weed sprays, and for me, I got a lot of property, so I've got a tank, i got a sprayer, I go around my four-wheeler, or I walk around a backpack, and I'm spraying the property all over the place. And I did heavy spraying the day before we left, and I could actually feel my eyes, like, burning. I mean, I could literally feel that stuff was getting into my eyes, which is so dangerous. It's just bad. It's just nasty stuff. People know the stories of people that die from this weed, you know, the Roundup. There's major billion-dollar lawsuit against some of that stuff. So anyway, so I just started thinking possibly my my eye had my eyes had been you know harmed, and so now I'm looking for a truck stop to rinse out my eyes to find a, a dispenser. If you didn't know anything about a shop, by law you have to have you know the first aid uh, eye wash. I bought this truck stop. It took us forever to find in the shop. You know, I got in the back shop and I was telling the guys what's going on. And we're trying to find the, the thing. We couldn't even find the dang thing. Then the thing barely worked. So I rinsed out my eyes <clears throat> and then got back in the vehicle and continued on my path. And nah, no way. That's It isn't that. It's something else. So the whole point is, what's the odds of me, like a year later, a year later, the summer of 2019, I now have a uh, ruptured retina and 
you know, now I don't have good vision, and now I'm going to be down here in Florida, and if you know anything about, you know, having a detached retina, you start going boating or motorcycling or you're bouncing up and down, you have a higher risk of you detaching your retina. And then if you're not careful, you'll go blind because you have to get to the emergency room and have it reattached. So for me, what a, so, so it's 2000 summer, 2019 summer, but I've lucked out. There's a really good uh, doctor here that uh, kind of mended it up and make it all work. And it didn't ruin my summer per se, but my left eye is, you know, more fragile to possibly... I'm having injury again if I'm not careful and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, so the whole point is I'm, I'm thinking about my the eye conversation kind of popped in my head this morning because of my mother. And then I thought about my family. But then I thought to myself, boy, the eyes, you know, to the car car theme, the car theme. Think about this. Think about today more than ever with the technology that's in our hand all day long, like being a phone. You know, what are we witnessing more than ever in, in vehicles is people that – have their eyes on their phone and not the road and it's huge and and yes everybody can say they don't do it but everybody at some point is looking at their phone somewhere in their driving day and i'm sure there's some that are very disciplined that throw the phone in the glove box or the center console and just don't use it but unfortunately that's not that's not the majority i'm sure that a third to half of the people uh you know, take their phone and they use them as they drive down the road, texting and reading information. And, and that's all I get to thinking of, to myself about is how our eyes are distracted more than ever. For driving capabilities, we have some of the most advanced vehicles on the roads and technology in the vehicles to the point that, you, well, if you watch my videos, you've seen my uh, 360 uh, Blue Cruise where I've owned the uh, a few vehicles now. My Ford F-150 Tremor, if you go back to my uh, video of last year, not this year, but last year, I had one of the first F-150 trucks that had the uh, the Blue Cruise. And that's where the car you know, looks down the road or the radar and the sonar or whatever you want to call the technology in it. It's going down the road and it's, and it's driving the vehicle on your behalf, which is freaky. <laughs> if you watch my videos, it's freaky. And as we all know, Elon Musk is all over the uh, autonomous vehicles and Teslas. And we already know the crashes of people falling asleep behind a Tesla. And the guys, one story, somebody's in the back seat, you know, and the car is driving itself. And, and so, you know, the eyes, your eyes have been uh, relieved of their your responsibility per se to be driving down the road, even though it's a known fact that an autonomous vehicle with Tesla, you're not just to leave your seat. Oh, here they come. The distractions are coming. I couldn't even get into 12 minutes of this video before the distractions started 13 minutes. And here they come. Here they come. Do they notice? Here comes a kid digging. Hey, do this. Yeah. Um. Hey, hello there, my little baby. Yeah, I'm, I'm YouTubing. Oh, don't do that. Mom doesn't like that. What? Don't do not do that. Why? Uh, your mother's not liking that. Uh, your mother's getting very angry with me showing you doing that on the, my video channel, so please don't do that. Anyways, go ahead. What I happened? I didn't mean to really do it. Okay, well, she's, she's not happy with you doing that. So anyways, what's going on, baby? How's it going with the, uh, the poppy? I don't really feel like talking on it right now. Okay, she's not happy with me because my wife is showing herself uh, rubbing her nose. Anyways, so uh, as we make our... Gallon is being aggressive towards Ginger. Really? What's that all about? Well, you put them in the back area, the cargo area. It doesn't have a trunk. Well, what's going on with Scout? Is he not getting, a, is he not getting enough loving from you? Are you giving too much attention to popcorn? Julia, Julia talked me into ordering a hot blonde. <laughs> Yeah, we all know what that means. If you're you ordered a hot blonde coffee, but my dad's trying to resonate on his church morning, the elder of the church, that he's you know, he's ordering blondes for you know his fun time. Yeah. Anyway, so there. Yeah, the eyes, right? What, what's it about the blondes, right? Hey, the blondies out there get a lot of the eye attention, don't they? You brunettes. Yeah, we know these stories, right? Yeah. So, anyways, so you think about the vehicles and with the cars. The, you know, for us as individuals, they're designing, they're, they're making technology that is supposed to help you drive down the road because the vehicles have the capability to drive themselves, which that's the goal. The goal is, even though, boy, if you kind of read this stuff on the, if you kind of follow what's going on, 
there's a lot of companies that have pulled kind of out of this autonomous driving. Uh, they're at Ford, if I'm correct, Ford or somebody else pulled out of a major uh, engineering, you know, company that has the autonomous driving capability. And I think a lot of these big companies are kind of stepping back as they're, they're starting to see the liability. I mean, think this through. If you drive an autonomous vehicle that's seeing, you know, is being your eyes going down the road and something happens, you know, who's at fault? And I think that's what the real concern is, that these big companies are realizing that, wow, you know, who th this is just lawsuit city for, you know, individuals that get into crashes that, you know, which who, who's at fault, the vehicle or the uh, the operator? But who's the operator? Is the vehicle the operator? Is the person sitting in the seat the operator? And and so I and even to the point I think right now GM is maybe being sued. I just think that there's a lot of it's the artificial intelligence which Elon Musk kind of first didn't support, but now it seems like more than ever he is supporting because he's using all of his cars that are the eyes for him. I mean, think that through. I mean, I just think for us where we are in today's society, the eyes more than ever. We're kind of being, our eyes are, do our eye, that's the biggest argument you'll have in like court cases and stories is what somebody's eyes saw versus what somebody else's eyes saw. And, and you know, once again, back to the texting and driving, here the other day, if you watched my Harley riding day, the first day we went down to see my brother, my, here's a perfect example even for me just here this past, last week is we went down to Chick-fil-A and in your Indian Rocks, Florida, Indian Beach, Florida. And as we get off our bikes and walk across the parking lot, my daughter is yelling at me because there's a lady in the drive through that has gotten her order, but she's on her phone and she's distracted, but she's not looking of, her, of where she's going and she's pulling away. And apparently, for my daughter, you know, her position is. As I'm walking across the parking lot, unbeknownst to me, this vehicle is coming up on me to run to hit me. And my daughter's screaming that I think caught this lady's attention at the last second that was looking at her phone instead of looking at where she's driving. I mean, how many times do we hear this story of people that do no longer pay attention to the road and are paying attention to their phone and they're and they're in a car crash and they kill somebody? I mean, there's just horrendous stories. I can tell you a story just in my own neighborhood like ten years ago. There was a lawyer that was on his phone, and he came up to an intersection in a suburban neighborhood, and a lady was there with her uh, baby stroller, and she's going through the intersection. He runs them over because he was on his phone uh, texting or distracted, whatever. I mean, he's he's gone to jail. I mean, here's a guy that's a, a lawyer that you know has lost his. It's ten years now, so it, it may be. It's within the 10-year reason. He may be out of jail by, by now, but sadly, here's a woman that lost her newborn because a man was, you know, you, but you hear these stories all the time. So it's the eyes, right? More than ever, we're, what, is, what is going on with our eyes? That's kind of the reason I wanted to make this channel this morning is because, or I should make this video this morning, is because I feel strongly that more than ever, what are we seeing with our eyes? And as we all know, we more than ever are looking at this device that's in my hand. That's that's where your eyes are more than ever, and and it's being used. You know, sadly, it's being used on the negative side to manipulate people, to make people think uh, something one way that isn't actually factual that it's that way. But but yet it's being used as a tool to persuade people to believe on how things that they're looking at are correct or factual and, and but in essence they're not and got the kid here walking around set the, the morning entertainment you see these two you see these two yeah they get the eyes in each other yeah my daughter loves just to watch my father his antics when he yeah well talking about eyes my father here you go see this is the morning this is the morning you know the kids watching my dad she's so watching my dad and then my dad's you know doing his uh his two-step shuffle along, I say. And, yeah, so even for my dad, he, his license now, due to his age and his eyes, can no longer uh, drive uh, drive at nighttime. You know, they have the running joke in Florida is if you're a widowed lady that's older, find a man that can take you out to dinner. You know, 
you know, find a man that can that can drive you home at nighttime. Yeah, the implications are that there's a lot of older men down here that have money and probably have a pretty good gig, but they can't see at nighttime. Yeah, right. But even at that, I mean, even for me as I progress in life, I can't stand driving at night. I mean, I prefer not to drive at night. I can. It's like I can't see. But I'm sure there's many other people too, especially on motorcycles. I can't stand riding motorcycles at nighttime. I don't know how people want. It. I mean, I can understand younger people, and and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there riding motorcycles at nighttime all the time. But for me, you just can't see it. You know, your eyes just can't see up the road. It's just so much to me. You don't have the same capability of trying to uh, prevent something from happening, and and then people at nighttime you blend in even more. You know, you're a one. Are you a one? How many times you've gone on the road? At nighttime, you see one headlight on a vehicle, and you think it's a motorcycle. Then at the last second, you realize it's a car. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, the, the reason I brought up eyes this morning is because of my mother, sadly, losing vision, and it's very much more challenging. I'm down here helping take care of my mother and father, and, you know, that's what it's all about. It's all about family. And for me, I think that in our society, more than ever... What do your eyes see? And, and, you know, I'll use Elon Musk once again. This guy, Elon Musk. I mean, where is it all going with Elon Musk? I mean, oh, my gosh. Now he reinstated the journalists that he supposedly banned or only a select few or, you know, what's the – where is the focus going to be on – you know, who's going to have the most focus moving forward? You know, is it going to be uh, is it going to be Elon Musk? I mean, think that through. But the whole point is, for Elon, he's opening our eyes to just how corrupt the social media and the general media is more than ever. And I'm sure, I'm sure some people would be like, yeah, you know, it's been going on forever. Well, okay, right. I, I get all that. But I thought the social you know, platform was more about each one of us contributing to information that each one of us kind of could come to closure that what makes sense and doesn't make sense. But yet, we're learning through Elon Musk that Twitter was used uh, more so to twist the uh, conversations and to twist what you feel is right versus wrong. And that's where we are more than ever, I think, in today's country here, is what's right versus wrong. I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge ongoing argument on versus just like I talk about all the time when electric vehicles. Yeah, some people just can't stand the, the look of an electric vehicle. And some people think the electric vehicle is awesome. And then we have what's right versus wrong. You know, what you, you, you read an article, uh, if you're a green agenda person that favors the electric vehicle, if you're an anti green person, then you'll read an article that doesn't share that basically, you know, tells you that. The green vehicle isn't the answer to the uh, Mother Nature's challenges of the world. So just, you know, there's your eyes. One person's eyes reads this and comes to closure what they feel is that versus another person comes to closure what, you know, they feel is, uh, but at the same time, it's just all the time. I think it's the minority that's trying to, to fool the majority into thinking that the minority is the majority because of what you read with your eyes, what you see with your eyes. And then, and then the violence. I mean, I just go back to 2019, 2020. It just seems like the ratchet of violence and what you witnessed on TV. I mean, does anybody remember the violence in the streets? Does anybody remember that? I mean, does anybody just really, who wants to remember? Does anybody just remember the hate? Got hate? The tearing down the statues? The just all out rioting in the streets because of what one person thinks right versus what another person says is wrong. And it's still ongoing, but the media machine, in my opinion, has ratcheted it down because they have the right individuals in sitting in the office right now that they want to continue to use them to continue to progress the agendas that the minorities want, but the majorities don't. So I truly believe, more than ever, we're right now, current in times today, that the media machine is playing to the uh, the sitting administration's policies, and they don't want to ratchet up the uh, the hate factor in the protest because it'll make people then think that this administration needs to go away, like the former one need to go away. And there's a lot more to it than that. But at the same time, I think they're trying to keep things calm because they want to 
and so many words say that they had the country at peace and everybody's just you know happy as can be and nobody's out in the streets and rioting and blah 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 but i tell you what i was just thinking to myself this morning as well you know what you see with your eyes that you know with the fentanyl drug overdoses i mean you just have to think that the underlying goal is to just eliminate the younger the younger people of this country it's very sad that I think that, I just think that what's going on is that you have to ask yourself, is the fentanyl use going down? It's not. Are the deaths increasing? Yes. Are the inner cities deaths going down? They're not. Are they going up? Yes. It's like the, it's like somebody is, has, a, has a masterminding the way to just terminate the younger population and to extinguish a certain, uh, you know, uh, color of our country. I mean, I say this all the time to people. It's like <clears throat> the the difference. If you think about the the influx of the people that are coming to our country and how it's changing, look just look with your eyes. You see the diversity of our country more than ever. It, you know, you go fifty to hundred years from now. Am I the majority? Is my you know my the way I look? I mean, I don't think so. I think the next fifty years, it's going to be a much more much stronger mix than what who I am. Could be wrong, but. We have a huge influx of uh, you know, immigrants come to this country, and who's, but who's getting further ahead and who's not? And you know that could become to some people become racial and everything else, which I have no desire to go down that road. That's not who I am. And but the point is, what are we witnessing with our eyes? And to me, what we're witnessing with our eyes is we're seeing the killing and death go up. It's not going down. And how do we stop that? I mean, how do we change direction? How does this country, you know, what is, what are people reading? What's driving people? Why do people, you know, resort to that as a lifestyle for the, 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 the crime and the hate and the death and the, and the drug abuse and the list goes on and on and on. You know, what's driving that? I mean, what, here we have the most technology in our, in our life. You have your eyes to pick up a device and get a lot of information. And yet it just seems that, is actually making things worse, just like the driving. Driving cars, I mean, it would be great to see the information, statistics of the amount of vehicle accidents today. They're all related to devices. And you know as well as I do, people are going to deny, deny, deny that, you know, that, that phone was in their hand, and that's what created the accident. That's what I think about. When I was, you know, you go so many years ago, you're in a car, and just coming up to an intersection, you didn't have a device to look at in your hand. And the reason I bring that up is I think to myself so many times, you come up to like a four-way major intersection, and who doesn't just kind of start looking around and seeing what the variables are, what's going to play out. And you see the different cars, the different positions of vehicles. You see the pedestrians. There's so much going on. But yet more than ever, people are sitting there looking at their phone, reading their email, reading a, a, an article, watching maybe a, a video, who knows what they're doing per se, but they're not in real time in their environment behind the wheel of the car to be cognizant of what else is around them that could possibly play out that they're not, they're not paying attention. Yeah, so the attention span, what has this device in front of me done to us? It's, it's taken away our attention span, I think. I think more than ever, the, and what I mean by that is somebody starts talking, then you just jump to conclusion of what you think they're going to say and do, and, and then you just kind of made up your mind of what's where this is all going. I think that does the device created faster arguments? I mean, one thing for sure, when you're texting somebody and you're not happy and you start texting and you kind of get revved up or you can call somebody because you've seen something or whatever, you know. So anyways, here it is, Sunday morning conversation. You're going to go to church and go see the, uh, the word, right? It's going to be the word of the day. What's going to be the scripture today? When next Sunday from next, think about this next week. If you're a you know a religious person, next Sunday is a big day. If you if you look at that being the day of uh, Jesus, then you're going to believe that next Sunday is a big day. Big day, not only for the big gifts, but for a a, a miracle happen. I always like say, pray for a miracle, pray for a miracle. And I can't emphasize enough. If anybody watch my channel and. You have challenges in your life. I'm just telling you, just pray for a miracle. God knows. I just so truly believe. You know, it's God on your side. I mean, come on. I mean, I just have the faith. I mean, for me, if my daughter wasn't with me, would I be in a hospital right now? Would I be dead? 
I guess. I mean, you know, you just kind of feel like that when your day's up, your day's up, right? If you're a godly person or just kind of kind of get that language, you understand that big time. So uh, what you see with your eyes, right? So it was an eyes conversation. Just came out of another morning where I just woke up, woke up and thought eyes. And that's what I did just to kind of keep the YouTube channel going. And here's the thing, which even for me, do I hit a milestone of 500? And, you know, a while back, I'd have been like, do I hit a milestone of 500 subscribers? And, hey, all of my subscribers and people watch, thank you. Appreciate you guys supporting me. I really do. I mean, I, don't, I mean, but I'm not, you know, if, if anybody watches my video, you don't see all these lengthy, you know, -da 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 -da, the big, the big shebang to go in, you know, the introduction. And then I have a constant thing in front of me. Hit the like button. Hit the like button right here. Hit the like button. And then hit subscribe right there. I mean, I just don't do it. I just don't. I'm having fun. I enjoy talking, as you can tell. I enjoy hopefully giving others ideas, conversations to talk about instead of arguing with somebody. Maybe you can just talk about something. And, hey, that's kind of a different angle. I didn't think of that. What do you think of that idea? Just, you know, we all like to talk. I mean, that's how that's how I am. Because when you start talking to somebody, just other things come from those conversations, which that's what's so cool. That's why I like to talk. I'm a talker. And so, so anyways, my milestone will be... I may be at 500 videos. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be like 492 videos today, I think. So for the year, to end the year out, uh, you know, some pretty good milestones for me. The car wise, <laughs> good lord. I mean, the most in my lifetime in one year of how many transactions I've done in one year. Yeah, the next year probably be how many I've sold in one year. Yeah, that could that could play out as well. You never know with me. If you follow my channel, I'm sure you'll be like, yeah, I could I can I can see that that guy could do that. I can do I can do you know both sides of the equation. I can bounce back and forth. So anyways, appreciate there's the kid sneezing. Yeah, yeah. That's for no you gotta hear my dad sneeze. That's a classic. I can only hope I can get that on video. You'll you'll see how that plays out. My mom laughs still. Everybody, thanks for watching my YouTube channel. What are your eyes on today? What makes you, you know, what makes you happy? What are you looking at? What car? I don't know. What's what's the? Uh, yeah, what do I what do I have my eyes on now? Right? What baby? Did you hear me sneeze? Oh yeah. You're congested. You had a cold. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm not sick. Well, you sound congested. I'm not. In denial. I'm not. A child. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Stay safe. Oh, God bless. Stay safe. Stay tuned. And follow along for some more ventures.